This documentary takes a look through the lens of award-winning photojournalist Dick Van Ostrand, a 40-year career covering first ladies and their presidential husbands, a material girl, a hitman, a bear named Brian, and a lion named Barry, record-breaking blizzards, a three-day freighter cruise on the Great Lakes, football games and campaigns, nightmare fires, and the bond of a father and son. My first camera was a small plastic camera covered with black tape, black plastic tape because it leaked light. And that was in the second grade. And I, my first attempt at photographing was a complete failure because I tried to copy a picture of Abraham Lincoln with that little camera in normal room light. And uh, of course I ended up with blank negatives. Well, it's like, it was called the Central Division and they did all the photography and news coverage, radio coverage for uh, five states, plus additional states that they would do things for. Winning, winning awards is a good way of ensuring your, your job security. <laughs> Sometimes you need to look no further than your own backyard. The steeple falls as fire consumed the Fremont Avenue Methodist Church. I covered all seven presidents that were in office during uh, the time that I worked at the Times, uh, starting with Richard Nixon in 68 and 72, and then ending up with George W. Bush in 2000. During, uh, during my time in Indiana, big story down there was the fact that Brian Piccolo and Gail Sayers became the first black-white roommates for the NFL. One of the games that I covered for the Times was the Bears and the Lions down at Tiger Stadium and Brian Piccolo was playing that day and I photographed him, photographed also Gail Sayers and then shortly after Piccolo would come down with cancer and eventually died and became the subject of the movie Brian's song. 1977, uh, I was working uh, at the paper, that was a Saturday morning, and there was absolutely nothing on the schedule. And I was a, shortly I, after seven, uh, the fire department received a call that the, that the Winona, which was a, a former luxury hotel that had been turned into apartments, was on fire. Our editors heard the call going out over the police scanner and yelled at me, and I ran to the hotel and then uh, they were the aerial truck and a number of firefighters were rescuing people many of whom were, were uh, sitting on window sills with smoke blowing out in back of them and uh, a policeman asked me if I could reach the, the uh, fire escape there was a man at a window who was handicapped and they were trying to get him out of the building and so I was able to grab the bottom of the fire escape and pull it down. And then the fire or the uh, policeman ran up and managed to open the window for this man and helped him out onto the onto the ladder and got him out of the building. And that picture ended up uh, part of a full-page layout in the New York Daily News and received tremendous play in Chicago Tribune and a number of papers. And then it was nominated uh, for a Pulitzer Prize. I miss the magic of the darkroom. There is nothing like giving somebody a tour of the darkroom back in the old days and taking a blank, what looks like a blank sheet of paper, sliding it into a trade developer, and watching this image come up, and then watching the faces of the people who are watching that happening for the first time. I miss that. It'll never, the, the image coming up on a computer screen will never replace the old wet dark. To be very respectful of people as much as the job will allow. Uh, because if you don't, you're going to get burned. And I think a lot of today's problems are caused by the fact that everybody has a camera. And there's so much of this uh, paparazzi-style photography that's being, that's being waged right now, and that there are a lot of cases where it's a real question as to whether it's invasion of privacy. Uh, it's the, it's the uh, you know, kind of the weekly world news, the National Enquirer type of, of photography rather than what was done years ago 
with both newspapers and magazine where it was a very high quality and, and high ethical standards to the photography. It's nice to have the, the quick having it available instantly, but then it's also nice to be able to go back where you had to discipline yourself because you only had 36, 20 or 36 exposures in your camera. And also uh, the discipline of just not seeing your image instantly is sometimes a very good thing. It makes, makes you think as you're shooting.